The past, the present, the future. A man trapped in time. This is Minor Dickens. Of the past 30 years, when I think of the most iconic and revolutionary films, a few come to mind. Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia, and of course, the four films of Jeff Daniels' brief but legendary filmography. I'm of course referring to his soul works, Dumb and Dumber, The Squid and the Whale, Looper, and of course, Dumb and Dumber 2. Now while these films at first seem unrelated, take a closer look. The four aforementioned films tell a singular tale of one protagonist battling with the cyclical nature of time. While Daniels' protagonist goes under various aliases, there is no doubt that he's playing the same character through different phases of life. Like the man with no name from Sergio Leone's dumbfounding Dollars trilogy, his character is explored through different lenses. To make it easy for you, let's call his protagonist by a simple but sweet moniker that I think best represents his journey. Minor Dickens. It's Minor Dickens. It all begins in 1994 when a seemingly simple comedy titled Dumb and Dumber is released. This is where America was first introduced to Minor Dickens, for the first time. Here, his name is Harry. We see his character at a base and simple form, much like the early stages of mankind's evolutionary journey. He is dim-witted, flatulent, and completely ruled by the id. Here we see him tackle complexities of modern life, but through a... Let's call it a stupid lens. Though he is a fool, there are flashes of his future character's hubris that will come to play later in the quadrology. I don't know, Lloyd. The French are assholes. The plot carries out as we all know it, with him and his enabler, Lloyd Christmas, going on a wacky misadventure. It all seems so simple, but then things get interesting. Cut to the Squid and the Whale title. Minor Dickens' journey is continued in Noah Baumbach's legendary and revolutionary film, The Squid and the Whale, which was released in 2004. A decade after Dumb and Dumber, we see Minor Dickens hardened and smartened by the ravages of time. Gone is his sweet and simple nature. And, repla and it is replaced by... Uh, I'm going to start this paragraph again. Gone is his sweet and simple nature, and it is replaced by a capable but cold, judgmental attitude. He has abandoned his carefree days with Lloyd and settled into an unsuccessful marriage to Laura Linney, fostering a harsh relationship with his two precocious children. Here we get to see Minor Dickens in a hardened state, flailing after an unwanted marriage and alienating his own offspring. He is depressed, egotistical, and fearful of any reference to his past intellectual inferiority. But he's not a serious guy. He's a Philistine. What's a Philistine? It's a guy who doesn't care about books or interesting films and things. However, traces of the Harry from Dumb and Dumber can be found in this character, creating an undeniable link between the films. Take this slapstick sequence for example. Joan, I'm sorry. It was an accident. There's still some Harry in this Minor Dickens. The Squid and the Whale ends with Minor Dickens being completely frozen from his family. But there is more to his story. This brings us to Ryan Johnson's 2012 film, Looper, which we see Minor Dickens in his most despicable and arrogant form. This film, set in the far future of 2044, finds Minor Dickens now cast off from his family in Lloyd running a criminal enterprise. Like the minor dickens of the squid and the whale, he belittles others, asserts his own dominance, and is cruel to the younger figures of his life. Not only does he carry these traits, but he is a full-on murderer, killing anyone that gets in his path. This shows his complete transformation away from the sweet Harry and fulfilling the cruel minor dickens we saw in the squid and the whale. And that's where the story ends or so you may think. But like any great trilogy, there is a fourth installment. In between the events of The Squid and the Whale and Looper, Minor Dickens had a brief but notable regression to his former self with the film Dumb and Dumber 2. Again, American audiences met Harry, 
the sweet buffoon we had known and loved. Forming a perfect postscript to the Minor Dickens saga, the world got to see that no matter how hardened he got, there was always a chance for time's pendulum to swing and for the silly man to return once again. He goofs off with Lloyd, says nice things, and is a general big stupid. Of course, this regression doesn't last, as we all know he will become the minor Dickens of Looper. Despite this, Dumb and Dumber 2 ends the saga on a hopeful note and provides a wonderful closing to the world's greatest film series. I think Minor Dickens' journey is best represented by this graph. As time passes, Daniel's Minor Dickens swings between two extremes, smart and mean, and dumb and nice. Like all of us, there are two poles within ourself that manifest through time's incredible journey. I like to call them Stupid Dickens and Mean Dickens, and together they create the heart of Minor Dickens. Will we ever see a film series as ambitious and heartbreaking as the Minor Dickens saga? Probably not. Given Jeff Daniels' reclusive nature and avoidance of any other film roles whatsoever, it is unlikely that the character will ever see the light of day again. But time is a crazy thing, so never say never, my friends. This has been Geek Scribe, signing off.